Welcome everyone, today I will be doing a technical review of the LEGO Star Wars Tanta 4 LEGO set. As part of this technical review, I'll be breaking down various techniques used in this set, hopefully that you can then use in your mocks, as well as pointing out a bunch of unique pieces included in this set that have various uses. The engines had the most variation with techniques. I was easily able to pull these off of the model and separate them into the top and bottom engines. Strictly looking at techniques, we'll take a look at the top here first. And it's very interesting because each engine here uses a slightly different technique. They have roughly the same structure on the inside with just a few clips and then some modified bricks on the sides to put those side panels on and then roughly the same engine structure behind. To connect the top panels to the structures, they use my favorite technique of the set. I've actually never seen this on a Lego set before. I think it's that's because it uses one of these newer pieces, which is this riot shield piece, most commonly found in the first order battle pack. So they put that on the underside of the panels and then use the little bar that normally a minifigure would hold and put that into the clips. That provides a really nice tight connection, a lot of clutch power there. Uh, this panel will not be flying off as you swoosh around the ship. Now where the variation comes in is the inner engine panel. The riot shield is more towards the top of the panel. And when that clips in, you see there's only a one by four plate on the bottom that kind of overlaps onto the side structure. Whereas the outermost engine has the right shield more towards the center of the panel. And then once that clips in, you can see there's two uh, plates with ridges on them, which kind of gives you a much nicer uh, end cap there. So it, it really rounds off the end of it instead of making it look incomplete. You can see now looking side by side, you do see that gap on the inner engine between the one by four plate, which is easily fixed on the outermost engine by using the plate with ridges. Now at first I thought they used different techniques because maybe there's some sort of space uh, inhibitor in the way of the inner engines that would prevent the panel from coming fully down if it used the outer panel technique. But when you see it here in the set, I can easily swap the two panels and it works just fine and it looks significantly better. Not really sure why LEGO chose to use the different techniques here. Now, although you do see that gap on the top engine, it still passes as pretty decent. However, on the bottom, we have something much worse. The outermost engines on the bottom use the same technique with the riot shield connecting into the clip there with those side supports. However, instead of using a top panel with some greebling, they just use two one by eight tiles, which I'm fine with just keeping it simple with tiles. However, because it's only two bricks or plates wide instead of four like the top ones, you have these really ugly gaps that you see on the side there and it, it just really takes away from the set. Now the other difference on the bottom here is instead of using an overhang with uh, either the one by four plate or those plates with ridges as we saw on the top there, instead they just have the panel kind of come down to the, or the, uh, the tiles come down to the bottom and then they have a one by four brick with a one by four tile on the end of it to kind of blend it into the ship. Now looking at the differences between the top and bottom engines when it comes to techniques, another thing to point out is the top engines on the inner engine, they use uh, regular wedge plates, whereas the outermost engine, and the same with the bottom, the outermost engine, uses the wedge plate, which kind of flattens out at the end there. So you don't have that full slope going up all the way, providing a little bit of empty space that you can kind of see into. And again, you see the inner workings of the set, the colorful bricks on the inside, not too great for a, a nicely detailed set. In the area between the engines and the main play area, we have quite a few spherically shaped surfaces. Now, the problem with all of these is that they have the same flaw. The most obvious way to point out this flaw is the escape pods, the flaw being the cracks and the gaps between the curved surfaces. They ended up using some bracket pieces, both brackets coming up and coming down from that plate, and that's how they attached all uh, four surfaces. They just use curved slopes there, and it, it achieves the nice spherical look, but you do get those massive gaps, especially the parts that there's no plates. You can actually see into the escape pod, and it just looks very incomplete, especially for such a beautiful set as this one. It's, it's a shame that these cracks had to be there. You also see the cracks in this little cover area that actually pops off quite easily, and these also use the bracket pieces as well, and you can see them. They're in black right there, and they're attached to that main plate. 
and then they had the curved surfaces on the side. This is more of like a half cylinder, but again, the same flaw, you see those cracks, and then you even see it on the dome that the handle is inside of. You can see the cracks again, using those bracket pieces, you get those cracks. And what amazes me is it's not like this is a problem that that Lego is just stumped on. In fact, they've found a solution to this in several other sets that they have, most notably the Saturn V rocket. That rocket has that massive uh, fuselage that is using that same technique with the curved slopes, and as it gets more towards the top of the rocket, it narrows using, again, the same technique, the curved slopes, but they use different pieces on the inside so that you don't have those gaps on the outside. And I wish they would have employed those techniques on this set, so that you don't have those gaps. You know, it kind of seems counterproductive to, to fix the problem of having the gaps in one set and then continuing to have that problem in future sets. In my opinion, that technique flaw makes this the worst part of this set, just this small area. However, there is one really nice technique that I wanna point out that's super easy, but commonly overlooked when building. And it's this back piece, right? Here, this back plate area, I'll call it, that kind of connects the rest of the set to the engines, making it kind of a flawless, seamless uh, transition so it doesn't kind of look weird that the engines just pop out of nowhere. This technique is super simple and easy to replicate, yet it's so effective at what it does. And all they did is they took a bracket brick. So it's a one by two by two brick that is modified with studs on the side. So you have those four studs. And then they built this structure with the slopes and then they just attached that to the brick. So it's in the snot formation, studs not on top. And then they just plop that brick right in there and you have that, again, that seamless transition from the main part of the ship to the engines. In the neck connecting the cockpit to the main play area, they used a technique very similar to that of the bottom engines. However, this time they did it right, which again, just boggles my mind that they do it right in the front of the ship, but then mess it up in the back of the ship. So here they fit a panel piece. Instead of using those one by eight tiles, they put a panel right between the wedge plates that are on their sides and it fits snug between them so you don't see any gaps in there like we do see on the engine and they also put some nice greebling on the top so it kind of blends in with the whole ship aesthetic they continued using the bracket pieces to connect the wedge plates onto the side as well as the shield technique inside of the clips to connect the panel piece on the top the final technique I want to point out is very subtle, yet very effective and commonly underused, and that is color palette. Now this ship is iconic for the main white coat with red stripes on it, which LEGO pulled off phenomenally. But on top of the red and white colors, we also see sand blue and light yellow pieces, which is very uncommon, especially for a Star Wars set but I really, really like these as accent colors. They really kind of pull off a more rustic, almost battle damaged feel to the set. Here are a few panels that I pulled off of the set just to show you a lot of the great greebling pieces that Lego included in this set. The good thing is a lot of these are really small, meaning that Lego included some extras of these in the set so you don't have to be picking apart this set if you want to use these pieces in your mocks. Just a few notable ones to point out that we don't always get. Those would be the roller skate, which we see right here. We have this piece, which is used as like a zip line for cables. Up here, we have a tread piece, which I've actually never seen used as greebling in a Lego set. And the way that's connected is it's a white one by one round tile with a little prong coming out of it uh, that then the tread piece connects onto. And then for the turret we see right here, there's also another turret. I just picked it off so you could see the tread piece easier. Uh, the turret uses a wand piece or a antenna piece that we saw on the UCS Hogwarts castle. So you can see there's tons of different pieces. We often see these ingot pieces. There's a bunch of them included in this set for greebling and then a few other non-traditional pieces for greebling. Now for some other pieces in the set that weren't used for greebling but have some other great uses that I found unique. Uh, we'll start off with this 2x2, two two, I'm not really sure what to even call this plate. It's uh, like a 2x2 two two tile with that round thing. I've never seen this part before. This is a newer part. It may be in some other sets that I'm just not aware of. Feel free to let us know in the comments down below. And what they use this for, uh, they connect it to the turret piece. And when you have that attached to something, it allows it to spin. So basically, this is a replacement for those old 2x2 two two turnstile pieces that we guess we don't see in sets anymore. I guess this is the new replacement for those pieces. The engines have quite a bit of useful parts 
One of those being this white bluish gray two by two inverted tile. This has a wide variety of uses and you get quite a few of them. You get two per engine. Some of them you do end up putting stickers on. Attached to this one was also another ingot. There are just almost like an endless number of these ingots in the sun. I know I pointed it out when it came to greebling, but there are just so many uses for this one piece. I'm glad we finally got a bunch of them. Also on the engines are these paint roller pieces, which I found to be the best parts usage on any Lego set. I just love the way these look. It looks like wiring coming out some tubing. It's just the perfect fit for the engines and you do get quite a few of them. They're on every single top engine, you get two of them. As part of the cockpit area, you do get these newer looking slopes in white bluish gray that don't have any studs on top and they're a bit of a unique look if you'd like to use them for rock work. And for this last part, I could really point to any part of the set for this. Uh, for this specific instance, I'll look at the escape pod, and that would be these bracket pieces. You can see they have a bunch of the newer one-by-one -one style, both the regular and the inverted ones, as well as the two-by-two -two brackets. They're scattered all throughout the set. Pretty much every single part of every portion of the set has brackets in use in some way, uh, especially in the engines as well. And these are perfect for very advanced rock work. And that's going to wrap it up for this technical review. Let us know down in the comments how you like this review style, if you'd like to see more technical reviews in the future, or if you want just generic reviews that go through the play features and the various other aspects of the set. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.